Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God, the Gospel that is the power of God unto salvation. And as we continue to go through Simply Disagree, this will be part seven of the series of a letter that the pastor at Harvest Bible Chapel Crystal Lake sent back to me in response to a letter that I sent to them after I had been studying mid-acts dispensational Pauline right division of my King James Bible for about two years. After about two years of studying and Romans 14.5 and being fully persuaded in my own mind, I wrote this letter to the 20 leaders at Harvest Bible Chapel Crystal Lake, which they had rejected. And they still reject to this day. And this message comes out about, I want to say it's been, let's see, where's the date of this letter? It has been, this was written July, around in July of 2012. <clears throat> so you're looking at about four years ago almost to the day. And so today we start off with, I have this book called the, Mo the Bible and Modern Science by Henry M. Morris. And in the preface he says, the purpose of this book, very frankly and without apology, is to win people to a genuine faith in Jesus Christ as the eternal Son of God and the Bible as the Word of God, and to help strengthen the faith of those who already believe. The Christian faith is not founded on wishful thinking or blind acceptance of tradition, but rather on a tremendous body of real, objective evidence. It is the aim of this little book to present in summary form some of this evidence, as well as to answer the most frequently raised objections to biblical Christianity. The evidences and questions discussed are mostly of an objective type rather than subjective or philosophic. The reader should realize, of course, that the evidence can never be presented with sufficient force to compel his acceptance in a mind which is already closed to the possibility of its truth. Otherwise, there would be no room for a free moral choice, and God desires that we come to him willingly in faith and love and gratitude. Nevertheless, there is so much evidence available as basis for faith in Christ and his word that one may find more, amp more than ample reason for the hope if he examines it with an open mind and willing heart. Having studied most of the basic sciences, having belonged to many scientific societies and associated with scientists and intellectuals daily for 30 years, having taught in five great universities for 26 years, having read thousands of books and articles on various scientific subjects, and at the same time having averaged over one hour every day for over seven, 27 years in the study of the Bible, he is firmly convinced that every word of the Bible is inspired by God, absolutely free of error, with innumerable marks of divine inspiration throughout its pages. Okay, so the reason why I read you all that about Henry Morris is that part of the preface. Let me read it again. Having taught in five great universities for 26 years, having read thousands of books and articles on various scientific subjects, and at the same time having averaged over one hour every day for over 27 years in the study of the Bible, he is firmly convinced that every word of the Bible is inspired of God, absolutely free of error, with innumerable marks of divine inspiration throughout its pages. But... And perhaps more significantly, this objective conviction has been abundantly confirmed through the years by the experimental reality of the living Christ, dwelling in the heart by faith, supplying every need and making full provision for all peace and joy in believing. Okay? So, he says that he is firmly convinced that every word of the Bible is inspired by God absolutely free of error. Okay? But when you turn to page 18, he says, We shall consider one other case in this chapter, the long day of Joshua, 
This supposedly incredible story is found in Joshua 10. In the great battle between the Israelites and the confederation of the Amorites, it is related how the Lord fought for Israel by two miracles, causing the sun and the moon to be inactive. And in parentheses, what does he say? Not stand still as incorrectly rendered in the translation. Not stand still as incorrectly rendered in the translation. So here it is again. In Joshua 10, Henry Morris says, The sun did not stand still. The translation is incorrect. Did you get that? This is a person who just said in the preface that every word of God is without error, right? But yet, in Joshua 10, in verse 13, it says, In my King James Bible, And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people have avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Yashur? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. So my Bible says the sun stood still, and it did not go down a whole day. Henry Morris says that what it says in the Bible is incorrect. So Henry Morris, on his own admission, is another Bible corrector. And by the way, he's not dispensational, he's not mid-acts, but how can you correct your Bible where ten pages before that, he says it's absolutely free of error. And this is what you get in modern Christianity. The only thing Henry Morris is good for is the scientific facts that he gives us compared to the Bible, whichever one he uses. But he does have some great scientific facts, and it's worth reading just for that. But if you want to learn more about a Bible corrector, one that's not dispensational, one that's not Pauline, one that's not mid-Acts, you can also read his books and find that out too. And so, as we continue through this, I wanted to point that out because he also says that you have to have faith Dwelling in the heart by faith, supplying every need and making full provision for all peace and joy in believing. Okay, that is not the gospel. Okay, that does not save you. Having joy in your heart and believing by faith in Jesus does not save your soul. It is the gospel, the grace of God that saves your soul. And that is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul declares it only in his writings. Peter never declares it. James never declares it. And John never declares it. The Lord Jesus Christ only teaches the gospel of the kingdom in the red letters. And so, it is Paul's, my gospel that saves you in the dispensation of grace, according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. And verse 2, it's by which also ye are saved. In verse 3, that Christ died for our sins. And in verse 4, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And if you're hung up on Acts 2.38, where Peter preaches, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Again, that is not the gospel. There's no mention about the death, burial, and resurrection. It's clearly repenting and being baptized just for remitted sins, not sins completely paid for. Okay? That's the difference between Peter's prophecy, kingdom gospel, versus Paul's mystery, gospel of the grace of God. Okay? And so, if you're still hung up on that, I have over two or three dozen messages about the gospel of the grace of God. Listen to them on my stations. So, in part seven here of Simply Disagree, with Joel's letter back to me, he says, You have neglected the full counsel of God. Martin Luther wanted to reject James also. It is not about dispensational or covenant theology. It's about God's word, all of it. But really, it is about dispensation, dispensationalism and covenant theology because the two don't go together. Okay, The two 
If you are a covenant theologian, then you are usurping all of Israel's promises. You are usurping Israel's covenant, which is the law, Exodus 34, 28. And by the way, the law and the covenant, which is the Ten Commandments, was only given to the house of Jacob and the children of Israel. Exodus 19 confirms that. Jeremiah 31 confirms that. Ezekiel 36 confirms that. And Hebrews chapter 8 confirms that. So, when you, when a pastor throws out nonsense that there's no difference between dispensational and covenant theology, he clearly does not understand anything about any of the theologies that are out there. Dispensational theology, covenant theology, systematic theology, I mean, we can go on and on about all the theologies, but there's only one that's right, and that's dispensational. Yes, covenant is in your Bible, but it's only and always will be for Israel, okay? And so, then he says that Martin Luther wanted to reject James. Well, why do you think Martin Luther wanted to reject, reject James? Because Martin Luther stumbled upon Romans chapter 4, where, he's, where Paul says it is faith without works, and then James, it says in James chapter 2 that it's faith with works, right? Well, we understand that James wrote, James 1, 1, to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he wrote before the Apostle Paul was saved in Acts chapter 8. So clearly, and we also know that in Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 that James is only a minister to the circumcision. And we know in Matthew chapter 10 he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So clearly James is a minister to the circumcision to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and he was writing to the 12 tribes. So if you don't understand your Bible as it stands and believe the context of it, you will be, just like Joel and Martin Luther, not understand who James is writing to. And like I mentioned in some of my messages before this one, in Simply Disagree, you mix James and Paul, which again goes against Scripture goes against Romans 16, 17, and 18, Titans, Titus chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, 2 Thessalonians 3, 14, Romans chapter 11, verse 6, and Galatians chapter 2, 21. You cannot mix law and grace. You cannot mix Israel's program with the body of Christ. There are stern warnings about that that Paul gives us, but yet Martin Luther didn't get it, and Harvest Bible Chapel, Joel, does not get it. And so, when you don't understand your Bible, when you don't understand the context, and you know the people that are like that, you talk to them, and all they talk about and tell you is what they think. They don't tell you anything about what the Bible says. It's always about what they think. Well, I think this, and I think that, and I think it's about my heart, and I think it's about good works, and I think, well, you need to study your Bible because it's not about what you think. And... Better yet, the Bible's not even about you. It's about Israel and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about Israel and the body of Christ. Okay? If you're not in neither program, you aren't doing anything that God wants you to do. And you better understand what program is going on today. It's not the law dispensation. It's not time past. It's not ages to come. Nothing prophetic is going on today. It's just the church, the body of Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, in the dispensation of the grace of God, in what time? The but now. And if you don't understand any of that, I'm going to tell you right now, you're teaching the devil's lie then. You're teaching that you are Israel. You're teaching that you have to fulfill the law and the covenant and the commandments. And, you know, that starts with selling all your possessions, right? Matthew 19. You can't wear mixed fabrics. You have to follow the Levitical diet. I mean, I know no one's doing that because Israel didn't even do that. So, better wake up and get a clue. Start studying. Listen to my messages and start understanding. Start getting the doctrine into your inner man. And so... I respond, Joel, how can you understand any Bible when you don't use a Bible? Okay, Harvest Bible Chapel, I call it Harvest Translation Chapel because they do not use a Bible. They do not know what the Bible is. They do not understand that God perfectly preserved his word and it's the King James Bible and that of the 1769. Okay, if you do not have that Bible, okay, you don't have a Bible. 
If you don't have that text, you don't have a Bible. And I know that's hard to get. If you have a 1611, there are many different 1611s. Okay? And you're just going to have to sort that out, Romans 14.5. And so, when a pastor uses a Bible that removes attacks and manipulates the Lord Jesus Christ, which would be your ESV or your NASB, which is a product of the Westcott and Hort Greek text, a product of the Lachman Foundation, which the Lachman Foundation is post-millennial, the kingdom's already here, Christ already came back, and we're building it. Um, clearly, Bible rejectors, Pauline rejectors, the revelation of the mystery rejectors. Um, when you study those translations, they all the future tense words are not there. They're all present tense. And that's why when you have people trafficking in those translations, they think they're building the kingdom now. I mean, I talked to one of my friends a few months ago who said he's going to help this ministry out in New Mexico. And he's got his slogan verse in Luke chapter 4. That's what the ministry uses. Well, we know Luke chapter 4 is the Old Testament under the law for Israel. But hey, that's my verse for today. That's what, the, that's what he's been taught, so that's what he's going to think and do. And he's going to build, help build the kingdom. That's what he said. But who cares what Jesus said in John 8 and John 18 when he said the kingdom's not of this earth? And doesn't it come down from heaven to the earth? Already built? So I don't know what kingdom he's building. It's not that of the Bible. Okay, It's probably that of that ministry over there in New Mexico that has no clue about any... Bible truth, doctrine, Pauline revelation, right division. Who cares what the Bible says? This is what we're doing. And so that's what you get. And when a pastor, this is the verse he backs it up with. And I'm, I'm just wondering if anybody read any of the verses in this letter that, were, that was sent out to the 20, because the verses don't make any sense with what the man says. And he gives me 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. That's it. That's all he gives me. And it's just sad. And he doesn't have, again, he doesn't have the verses written out. He doesn't tell you what translation he uses. He just throws them at you. He doesn't care about context. He doesn't care about what dispensation. He doesn't care about rightly dividing. He doesn't care about what Bible he's using. He doesn't make sure that he's using the right one that's without error. And this is what happens. So context, context, context. If you do not understand what God is talking about or who he's talking to in the right Bible, you'll never get it right. When you don't do what Christ commands us to do through the Apostle Paul by rightly dividing your Bible, you disobey the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what's amazing because that's what most of these pastors miss. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37, the Lord Jesus Christ makes it very clear through the Apostle Paul. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 14, 37. There is no 2 Corinthians 14. He says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write, that would be the Apostle Paul, unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So clearly, we're in a new dispensation, we're in a new time, the but now, and now... In the dispensation of the grace of God, according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25, Paul's letters are the commandments of the Lord today. And what does he command us to do? Well, 2 Timothy 2, 15, right? Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what he commands us to do. Is that what you're doing? If you have a new translation, it says to correctly handle, so you would not know how to rightly divide. If you have a new translation, it says to do your best, not study, so you would not know how to study. And that makes perfect sense because he told us from the pulpit, Joel, not to be a Bible fathead. Well, that would go against 2 Timothy 2.15. The Lord Jesus Christ, through the Apostle Paul, tells us to study and rightly divide. Why? So we can show ourselves approved unto God. Imagine that. 
You don't show yourself approved unto God teaching the Bible wrong. You don't show yourself approved unto God serving in harvest ministry. Okay, You don't show yourself approved unto God thinking that you're Israel under a covenant. You don't show yourself approved unto God tithing. You don't show yourself approved unto God telling people you have to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in water baptism when Jesus Christ got baptized twice. And the second one was his baptism unto death, which has absolutely no water. But you mix Romans 6 with Matthew chapter 3 which is horribly wrong. In Matthew chapter 3, there's a verse with three baptisms. What do you do with that? Do you follow those two? You need to get your Bible right, or you are going to lead souls to hell, which is what most of these pastors do. And they don't even know it. I, I really believe that Joel doesn't even know it. Because he's so ignorant. And you know what? You want to know why you're ignorant? Because of pride. That's the pride the Bible talks about. And when we go to Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, this is also the verses that he gives us. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And then he gives us um, Galatians 1 through 8. Paul, an apostle, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me under the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. And again, these are the verses that I gave back to him. I'm sorry, these aren't the verses from him. These are the verses I gave back to him, because he is preaching another gospel. He is preaching a covenant gospel. He is preaching the do-good, the do-gooder gospel to stay saved or be saved. Okay? That's what this man preaches there at Harvest Translation Chapel. That's what they all preach there, not just Joel. It's the do-gooder gospel which is going to send your soul to hell. It's not trusting that Christ did everything necessary for your soul's salvation. It's trusting Christ plus. And you know what's funny? They used to teach against that, but they preach it. They preach what they preach against. It's always about the works over there. When the pastor came over to my house because I was leaving the church, he looked at me and said to my wife, I think this man's saved. I think he is. He didn't tell me the gospel, the grace of God. That's the only standard by measuring somebody if their soul is saved or not. It's by the cross. It's, are they trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection or not? How hard is this? That's Paul's, my gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He declares it. So that's the standard. And Paul makes it very clear in Galatians chapter 2, Titus chapter 3, that it's not by works of righteousness nor by works of the law. And Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, so that no man will boast. And all they do is boast about their law, tithing, and baptisms there. And that's why I know most there probably aren't saved. They don't understand their Bible. They don't have a Bible. They preach whatever gospel they want to preach. And they're mixing law and grace and they're sending souls to hell. And it's sad. And that's what Paul warns us about in Galatians. Verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And the reason why Paul mentions angels in there is because there's the everlasting gospel that only angels preach. And Paul makes it very clear that that's not the gospel he's preaching either. And we know that the revelation of the mystery, Galatians 1.11, he didn't get after man. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So that means it's not from Peter, James, or John either. So it's not by angels. 
That would be the everlasting gospel. And it's not by Peter, James, and John. That would be the gospel of the kingdom. He was given a completely new revelation, and that would be the revelation of the mystery, and he was given the gospel of the grace of God, which no one knew since the world began, Romans 16, 25, okay? Compare that with Acts 3, 21, okay? One was known, one was not known, okay? And when you're a Bible believer, that's what it says. If you're Henry Morris, you're not going to get it. He doesn't even believe the sun stood still in Joshua. After he said, he believes the Bible is without error. But he corrects it. And it's sad. That's what Martin Luther tried to do. He wanted to take the book of James out of the Bible. Why? Because he had no understanding of right division. No understanding of dispensationalism. No understanding of when the church, the body of Christ starts. No understanding of the revelation of the mystery. And so you have it. As we continue through our study of simply disagree, we're going to continue to go through a few more questions. Actually, just a couple more questions. And that'll finish our study of the response by a pastor that needs to get a new job because he does not understand his Bible. And because he doesn't understand his Bible, he is in grave danger. He needs to get saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. And then, once he's saved, he needs to learn the material before he goes back and teaches faithful men to teach faithful men. Thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions at preachingthegospel.saves.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.